You got anybody, anybody wake up in the night and hear you in the rain? Yeah. You know, it, I think it's always cool when it rains at night and then you wake up and then it's like sun shining. You know what I mean? One of the things that happened last night is, is I woke up in the middle of the night, heard the rain. I was just, I was just reminded, like, you know, how many, how many secret and unseen hidden ways that the Lord provides for every single one of us? We don't even see it. We don't even recognize it. We're sleeping away, dreaming about whatever we're dreaming. Then we're going to get up and do our day. And, be full. and he is, he, he's watering the ground so that food would grow so that we could feed our families. You follow me here? And it's quiet. It doesn't expect a thank you. It just is there. That's, that's his goodness to us. And so, you know, it's, a good, it's good to take a moment and I'd ask us to do this at the beginning, just right now. Just take a moment quietly. Just take a second and just within, just say thank you for, thank you for taking care of me. Yeah? Can we do that? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing the rain. Thank you, Jesus, for being our daily bread. Filling our bellies providing our needs. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being good to us. We don't say it enough, but thank you. If this is your prayer, can you say amen? Amen. amen. It's good. It's good. You know, I was at a family birthday party yesterday, and uh, I was in the middle of my meal. I was talking to my son, my youngest son, and in the middle of the meal, he just looks at me and says, Dad, do you have to be baptized to be saved? And I, I mean, honestly, I had no idea where this was coming from, you know? And so immediately I'm like, why are you asking, you know? And he said, well, I've been talking to a Catholic online, and we've been, ta- we've been discussing baptism. And I was like, what? And he says, yeah, we're also talking about the Pope. And I was like, the Pope? Yeah. He's like, we're going back and forth about whether the Pope is the head of the church or not. And I was like, how many people are you talking to online? And what are you talking about? right? And he goes, I talk to people all the time about spiritual stuff. He goes, I'm talking to some Muslims in Dubai about Jesus and Muhammad. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, when I was a kid, I had a, I had a friend who was an atheist. I thought that was exotic. You know what I mean? <laughs> My son is talking to Muslims in Dubai, you know? I mean, it's, it's wild. It's wild. I mean, we, we, we live in a world today where you can talk to anybody and about anybody can talk to you, right? I mean, it's crazy. And it's super helpful. I mean, we learn all kinds of things because we trust people, you know? My wife and I are just striking out trying to do the farming and gardening thing. I'm following some dude in upper state New York telling me how to do it. I, don't, I mean, the pictures look good. I guess I'll trust him, you know? But this is the way we are. I mean, any of you guys here, you got a problem, you need to fix it? What do you do? YouTube it, right? YouTube it. I mean, I don't know who the guy is on the thing, but I, I'll try it, right? I mean, this is a, I mean, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, it, it, we, got, we got so many people trying to help us out, telling us what to do. But we, of course, we don't know if what they're saying is valuable or not. That's the problem, right? Only experience teaches that, Right? The, the downside of this is that our lives are super noisy. So many voices, so many demands, so many people telling us you ought to live this way or do this. To be successful, you have to do that. Do you follow me? Uh, I mean, and all of the, the voices on the outside, they end up taking up uh, home on the inside, don't they? It gets, it's not just noisy out there. It gets really noisy in here, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of us wake up in the morning, we all, we're all ready. As soon as we wake up, we got a list of all the things we have to do. Who, who's like that here? I got to do this, 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 I got to do this. My wife is like that. I don't wake up like that. I wake up with this blankness in my head. But the thing is, is me, I don't, I don't wake up with this, but I tell you, you know what I do? I immediately grab my phone and I start scrolling, because that's how I wake up. I, I, my, I, I'm trying to wake up, you know. But I feel my, feel my head... I fill my inner life with all the voices from the very beginning. And then I go through my whole life, my whole day, just buzzing, 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 buzzing. So many voices, right? 
because of it, we feel like we're being pulled in a hundred thousand different directions. Right? Yeah. Pulled, pulled apart, pulled apart. You know, we have this feeling today, it's so common, we think that the world is falling apart. I'm wondering, is the world falling apart or are we falling apart? I mean, there's, there's hard things going on in the world, but I mean, I'm telling you, that's, there's hard times in every age. Just take a history lesson. What is it about us that can't seem to hold together in the difficulties? Why is it that we are being pulled apart? Why is it that we are falling apart? I think one of the signs of this today is it's very difficult. It's, it's becoming more and more rare to find people with integrity. To find people with integrity. Integrity means, on one level, it's honesty. You know, you say what you mean and you do what you say, right? But integrity is more than that. Integrity is reliability, it's trustworthiness, it's dependability. Integrity is about inner strength. You know, there's a couple people here that go to our church here that build bridges. And when they talk about bridges and building bridges right, building bridges well, they talk about integrity, structural integrity. To build a bridge right, it's got to be able to hold up a load. It's not going to fall apart under pressure. Am I right? Now, we are really, we're, I mean, it's an important thing that those guys that are out there building those bridges, build those bridges with integrity. Can I get an amen? You depend on, your life depends on it. You're going to get on that overpass on the way home, right? And you're trusting that that bridge has integrity. You're putting your whole family, your whole family's life in that, trusting that bridges have integrity. My question to you is though, do you have integrity? Can people trust you with their life? Do they know that you are reliable? Are you trustworthy? It's, it, I mean, it's increasingly a difficult thing to find these days, someone who is dependable in that way. That, ha, that, doesn't, that doesn't fall apart under pressure. That doesn't change as soon as an opportunity comes that sounds better. If I do this, I'm going to become this, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to like this. I'm going to change my position. Or things get difficult, so I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do this, right? It's hard to find people that are stable, that have integrity. I'm telling you this. It's as important that you have integrity as those bridges have integrity. Because all of us will have to bear a load in our life. And the question is, is can you bear up under that load? Can you carry that load? Can you even help carry other people's load? The only way you're going to do that is if you have integrity. Right? Can I get an amen on that one? Uh, it's hard to find. And it's hard. This is the thing. I can't, you can't just, I mean, I don't want to preach this message. I was thinking about this message. I was like, man, we really have to refocus on this thing. It's so rare and so precious and so important. And, and it's so hard to find these days. But <clears throat> does it make any sense for me to get up here and just be like, hey, people, have more integrity? No. Right? You walk out here, I'm going to be, I'm going to have more integrity. That might last five minutes. Right? It's not like you can just do it, right? You can't just decide to have integrity. There's something deeper in you that's required for you to become somebody with integrity. You have to tap into that deeper thing. And I'm going to say the root, the spiritual root of integrity, the core of it, and the thing that matters the most is this that of all the voices that you hear in your life, all the voices that surround you, even the most important voices of your wife or your husband or your kids or your family, or the, mo the most important is a voice that is within you. It's deeper than all of those. It's more constant than all of those. And you live your life striving to listen and obey the voice of our God. That's, that's the root. 
That's the root. That there, of all the voices, there's one voice that's different. There's one voice that matters. And you strain to hear that voice. And when that voice calls, you obey. Now, a lot of us, you're thinking, I don't ever hear that voice. I'm saying, you don't understand. You don't, have not learned. You have heard that voice It comes in all different kinds of forms and all different kinds of ways. Anybody, do you know what conscience is? That, that sense of, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going off here. Wait a minute, I've done wrong here. I need to correct my behavior. I need to go back and retrace my steps here, right? There's that, 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 that slight prick, that wound that happens. That is one of the ways that God speaks to us. There are many more. And if we learn to strain to listen, that we enter and we grow to have this relationship with the Spirit of God and the voice of God, that voice gets louder and clearer and more constant. Now, I'm going to tell you this. It's not because God starts talking to us more. The Lord is always talking to us. But as we can hear it more, because we're attuned to it, once upon a time, people had radios in their cars. Do you guys remember this? Radios in the cars? Yeah. I have an old pickup truck. It still has a radio. It's got this little band, this little knob that you turn. Do you follow me here? And that little thing goes along, and then, okay, and, 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 and there's a receiver. It, like, picks up the radio wave. Do you follow me? Okay, now I want you to think about this. Those songs are always playing. Those songs are always there. In fact, those messages are just flowing through. They're flowing through us right now. But can you hear it? No. You got, you got to have the right instrument. You got to learn to tune in to the right channel to hear it. God's always talking. Question is, is, you know, what are you listening to? What voices are, are occupying you? What voices are you paying attention to? What station are you tuned into? If you're tuned into one station all the time, the one voice that matters, you will become someone with integrity. It will happen. It will just flow from you. Because your choices... What you do, how you live, is not dependent on your external circumstances. It's not, it's not even going to depend on your judgment or what you think is best. That's just one more voice among all the others. But you learn to tune in. You learn to hear that constant voice, that constant presence. You tap into it. You turn to it. You lean into it. And you become someone who's constant and dependable, and not shaken. You become someone with integrity. We see this in the life of Jeremiah because Jeremiah was a man of integrity. He was a man who was called to say and do things against all the other voices of his life, of his day, of his surrounding. But he learned so much to tune in, to trust that voice that he was able to step up and go against the grain in ways that, I'm going to tell you this, were the salvation of his friends and his family and his nation. Jeremiah lived in a time when everything was falling apart. The nation of Israel, of Judah, was falling apart. The faith of the people were falling apart. And Jeremiah didn't fall apart. The name Jeremiah means God will lift up. And Jeremiah lived into his name. He was the way that God lifted up his people in a time when they were falling apart. It was through him. He was the bridge that held them high. He was the one that they could depend on. And so as the outer world fell apart. 
the inner man stood. And he became the way through which God lifted up his people. That could be you too. That could be you. I want us to dig into it this morning. We're going to look at an episode in Jeremiah's life. But before we do, I want us to go back to the beginning of Jeremiah's calling. If you open the book of Jeremiah to the very first verses in Jeremiah chapter 1, we hear this. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who are of Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. And already you're like, what? Like biblical stuff, blah, 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 blah. What is all that? I'm telling you, if you slow down, you spend some time with it. This is, this, this, this is, uh, it will illuminate not only your understanding of Jeremiah, but yourself. The, wor- the Lord gave messages to Jeremiah. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah. I want you to hear this. There was a word for Jeremiah from the Lord. A voice. It mattered. When did that voice come? Well, it came in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah. It says that Jeremiah was a priest. He's doing his, doing his job, doing his tasks, doing his stuff. But the Lord came and spoke to him in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah. Now you're like, who's Josiah? I'll tell you about Josiah. Josiah is a really, it was actually a really important person. Jeremiah was Jeremiah began his ministry in, I'll say this, in in this brief moment, a few years, where through all the darkness of everything falling apart, all of a sudden there was this shining star, and it was Josiah. Josiah was the grandson of King Manasseh, who was horrible. He was the worst king in the history of Israel, and he reigned for 55 years. I don't know if you're a fan of our current president. I really don't care, okay? But I'll tell you this. For better or for worse, our presidents can be in there four years, maybe eight years tops, right? So even if you hate what they're doing, they got eight years to do their damage, right? Manasseh did his damage for 55 years. What's going to happen to the country? Manasseh was, uh, was, died, and he's, uh, his son succeeded him, Amon. He was as corrupt and evil as Manasseh was. It was so bad that Amon was murdered within the first two years of his reign because of how violent and bloody he was. And so the throne passed to Amon's son, who was a little boy by the name of Josiah. And you think that Josiah would turn out like his father and his grandfather, but there's something about Josiah. He's different. He doesn't go, he doesn't walk in the path of his father or his grandfather. In fact, the Bible says it's funny. It says, Josiah, he he followed in the footsteps of David, which was like his grand, 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 great grandfather, right? The Bible had to go that far back to find someone who was decent. Josiah was a good man. He was a good boy, good young man. And he sought to restore the people of God back to God. And after 13 years of Josiah's reign, the times were a-changing, to quote Bob Dylan. Things were getting better. And Jeremiah began his work as a prophet during that time the Lord spoke to man to speak to him at that time. I want you to see this is a time of hope and promise. It was difficult, but it's a time of hope and promise because Josiah was leading reforms. He was changing things. He was calling the people of God back to God. And then something amazing happened, something un- unanticipated. Josiah had started throwing money into rebuilding the temple. The temple that was, all, it was decrepit. It was, it, was, it was falling apart because Manasseh and Amon didn't put any support into it at all. It was this empty building that was falling apart. Well, Josiah wanted to restore the temple, so he started pouring money into rebuilding and restoring the temple. And while he did that, there was a priest in the temple who found something. He found a book, a book, and that book was the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible. He found it. And that book contained all the ways in which the people of Israel could return to God. I want you to think about this for a second. They had forgotten the ways of God. They had abandoned the ways of God and they're trying to find their way back, but they're not sure how. They're not sure how to do it. And all of a sudden this book shows up. 
Most likely, the book was hidden from Manasseh and Amos so they wouldn't destroy it. The priest pulled it out, realized that Josiah was somebody to be trusted, and said, look what we found. Look what Josiah's response is. We'll see this. When Josiah hears about this book, this is recorded in the book of 2 Kings 23, verses 2 and 3. Then King Josiah went up to the house of the Lord, and with him went the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. This is this giant, I would say, public display. The king of the land goes up before the front of the temple and reads the entire book of the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, to the people of the Lord with all of the priests surrounding him. The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord, keeping his commandments, his decrees, and his statutes with all of his heart and all of his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in the book. And all the people joined in the covenant. I mean, this is a sincere heart. Josiah is like, we are going to turn to you, Lord. And all the people agree. And all the priests are standing there watching this happen. And if you remember, Jeremiah was a priest, which meant he was standing in that crowd, listening to Josiah do what he does. This ignited a revival in the city of Jerusalem. You can read about it. People, People, they were so inspired by Josiah that they said, we're going to do this too. We're going to return to the ways of the Lord. And all the people started getting old time religion. They started flooding back into church. The pews were full. People started giving to the temple again. It was good times. Crime rates went down. Old time values went up. It was looking good. And Jeremiah was right there in the center of all of it. But you see, Jeremiah was not the kind of person to trust the outward signs. Jeremiah had cultivated an ear of the heart to hear the voice of the Lord. And what the Spirit was saying to Jeremiah was, don't trust what you see. This is all window dressing. This is all outward religion. The hearts of the people have not changed. And then that voice says, Jeremiah, I want you to do something. As everybody's coming to church on Sunday morning, I want you to stand at the door of the church and I want you to preach that to the people. Put yourself in Jeremiah's shoes for a minute. Do you think this is going to go over well? <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but if you came in here on Sunday morning and you saw me or Chad at that door preaching, preaching at you guys, right? Get your act straight. Come on, get with it, people. I don't, would you come back? Is that, is that good job security? Thank you, Denara. <laughs> They're not going to like it, and Josiah's not going to like it either. Oh, but I want you to see, this is what the word of the Lord says. This is what the voice of the Lord and the Spirit says to Jeremiah. We see this in Jeremiah chapter 7. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, go to the entrance of the Lord's temple and give this message to the people. Oh, Judah, listen to this message from the Lord. Listen to it. All of you who worship here, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says, even now, if you quit your evil ways, I will let you stay in your own land but don't be fooled by those who promise you safety simply because the Lord's temple is here. They chant, the Lord's temple is here. The Lord's temple is here. But I will be merciful to you only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice. Only if you stop exploiting foreigners and orphans and widows. Only if you stop your murdering. Only if you stop harming yourselves by worshiping idols. Then I will let you stay in this land. 
that I gave to you, your ancestors, to keep forever. That's a heartwarming sermon, isn't it? No. Within a matter of days, Jeremiah is going to be hunted down by his, his boss, the high priest. He's going to lose his friends. You can hear him confessing in his own heart. I'm all alone here, Lord. He lost it. He sacrificed it all. It takes strength to stand up to your enemies. It takes greater strength to stand up to your friends and the people that are on your side and to say what needs to be said because the Lord has convicted you to say it. I want you to see this. Jeremiah was a man of integrity. And even though it caused controversy, even though it caused difficulty in his life and his surroundings, it was through this, it was through his willingness to obey the voice that matters that enabled him to lift up his people. He could bear the load because he trusted the voice that matters. What if we were a kind of people where of all the voices we hear in our lives, television, internet, even husbands and wives and children, there's one voice that's set apart and we strive to listen and to follow that voice no matter what. What kind of people would we be we'd be people with integrity, you see. I want to encourage you. I've struggled to hear the voice of the Lord throughout my life. There were years that I went by, I would say probably decades that went by, even decades in ministry, where I was just sort of like, I'm, I'm just doing what I think I should do. I had lost the ability and the desire to hear the Lord's voice. But then I was convicted to return. I was convicted that on the outside I was doing everything I needed to do, but on the inside I was hollow and empty. I was convicted to take time each day to sit in his presence and say, Lord, you're here, and I'm here. If you have anything to say, I'm all ears. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, not, like, it's not like immediately, you know, like, oh, God's like, hey, what? It takes, it takes some work to dial in that, that frequency. It takes a little bit of work to get that tuned, you know, because we're all, bleh, you know. Am I right? Are you? Uh, that's me. Amen. Uh, uh, you got you to take a moment. Tune that thing. That's, Lord, I'm here. And so are you. I want to hear from you. If you take our hidden class, that's one of the first things you learn. Practice. Lord, you're here. I don't see you. And this moment, I might not feel you, but you're here. I want to hear your voice. This is the root. This is the source of integrity. And it just takes a little bit of time each day. Jeremiah was able to hold up an, an, an astounding load. I mean, he was able to hold up a huge load. Don't you want to be that kind of person that the people around you that love you can lean on you, that they can rest in you, that they can depend on you, that you could hold them up because you yourself are being held up by something beyond you, a strength that is not yours, that you don't fall apart because he is holding you together. The one who holds all things is holding you together. That every word that comes from your mouth is not coming from your thoughts and your ideas, but it's his. 
You're like, you're like a transparent window for all the light of God to shine through. I desire that. I desire that for all of us. Let's start right now. Let's start right now. Let's grow still. Close your eyes. Get away from the distractions. Let's grow still for a moment. Feel your feet on the ground. Become present here. Your mind's going to want to race away. Don't let it race away. Stay right here. Listen. Now say in your heart, Lord, you're here. And Lord, I'm here too. I want to hear you, Lord Jesus. Speak to me. Whatever you have to say, whatever you have to show me, whatever way that you wish, Lord Jesus, to manifest yourself to me, to show me that I am not alone, but that I am with you as you promised. Lord, would you do that for me? Lord, let me rest with you. Lord, let me put down the burden and the the load. Let me receive from you. I'm waiting for you, Lord Jesus. I'm waiting.